The Great Awakening, Revival, and Harvest, Part 2. Habakkuk, Chapter 3 and Verse 2. Everybody roar with the voice of thunder. Want to go. O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years. Make known in wrath. Remember mercy. O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and I was afraid. I've heard it. You've revealed your mind to me and I became afraid. When the word of God doesn't move you, it's a dead conscience you are carrying. You are amongst all men most miserable. Oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and I was what? And I was afraid. Why was he afraid? Because of the revelation of the heartbeat of God. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years. Make note and in wrath. That is, let mercy prevail over judgment. That's the meaning. What is the awakening? Awakening means to come alive. To be aware. It means awareness. Alertness. Sensitivity. To what? One. To the times and seasons we are. What season are we? One. In the world. Two. In God's agenda. What season are we? Many are not aware. Many are ignorant. Not even many. Most people are not aware. How can we call ourselves Christians? How can we call ourselves pastors? Apostles? Title conscious? Responsibility ignorant? 7 billion out of 8 billion going to hell. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead. Have you heard that? See then that he walks circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. That's awakening. Be awake of the time. Because the days are what? Evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Understanding what the will of the Lord is. Get back to verse 14. We'll take it from Amplified Version. And Christ shall give thee light. Therefore, he says, Awake, O sleeper. Tap your neighbor, say, Wake up. You can be awake but asleep. Are you aware of that? Uh -huh. When you don't know the will of God, when you don't know the times and the seasons we are, it means you are asleep. So you need to be woken up. That's the awakening. And arise from the dead. It's not that you are dead, though, but you are dead and deaf. And Christ shall shine, make day dawn upon you and give you light. Look carefully then how you walk. That's be awake, be aware, be at alert, be sensitive. How you walk, live what? Purposefully and worthily and accurately. Men are not living accurately because they don't know the times and seasons. They are not winning souls. Because they don't understand the times and seasons. They are not living purposefully, worthily, accurately. Not as the unwise and witless, but as the wise. What's the description of the wise here? Sensible. That's the sensitivity I was talking about. Intelligent. So you are now an intelligent, a wise person, a sensible person. Making the very most of the time. Buying up each opportunity. How can a soul pass by and you know that this is a dead soul? And you can't buy that opportunity. Buying the opportunity meaning seizing the moment to witness to the person. Jesus loves you. There's a man of Galilee that has all the solution. All solutions to your life. Buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. We are living in an evil days. 
where people see white and call it black where they see black and call it gray people with dead consciences man marrying a man a man changing his body structure to become a woman now when you are proposing to somebody you have to look twice you have to look for people to confirm that of a truth this is a male this is a female we are in evil days where people don't have respect for truth when you tell them truth they react they rise up to kill you they attack you for the truth conscience is sold out dead how can a mother a mother kill all high level children just to gain power in witchcraft to grow in power one mother how do you explain that i was watching a, a, a program and i saw during the deliverance he said i killed all my 11 children now she's a stepmother so she now went after this other wife's own children also yeah i finished my own children if i finish them who is this one that i will not uh, deal with people selling their children to make money well, evil days that's the awakening that we 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 need to come alive to pastors becoming drug dealers pastors carrying drugs you you are traveling you you are traveling you tell people you at the airport you tell them you are a pastor they will tell you stand this side they want to search you properly you see pastors hiding when you hear hiding drugs cocaine in bibles evil days pastors joining armed robbery becoming armed robbers you see pastors compensating herbalists going to herbalists for power going to satan for power and they carry that hand and be laying the same hand on, on, on innocent people. You check beneath their altars. They've buried all manner. Is it not in uh, Anambra State that they, they found uh, all the pillars of that church? Human beings were tied uh, uh, to the pillar, each of the pillars. And they cast concrete on it with live human beings. Not that they were there. They cast them with it. The days are evil. People don't know who to trust. Brothers are betraying brothers, selling out brothers, sisters selling out sisters, parents selling out children, children selling out parents. What a world. Betrayals everywhere. The days are evil. We need this awareness. You come to church, you trust people in church, you hand over business to people in church that this is a brother in church, that this one will be truthful, yet your business money swindle you want to talk they launch attack on you they threaten the same church they even speak in tongues see on facebook a pastor is there on social media a pa somebody invited a, a, a somebody they went for a program in that church where that child dedication or something only for the guy saw the project they are doing transferred one million but he told them it will be hundred thousand and he mistakenly transferred one million pastor give the money now refund the money you are threatening left and right don't touch me my friend carry him they go police station go and say that people have brought millions to me to pray for there was a man there was a man that came to me pastor please this money i know it will be safe in your hands i'm traveling please i'll be back in a month's time how much did that man give to me to keep one hundred thousand dollars as at that time how much was uh, a dollar a dollar was 450 that's how much he gave me no calculate how much he gave me have you calculated it 45 million naira only for him to come back he didn't come back in a month he came back after two months the same way he wrapped the money is the same way because he had told me he wants to start a business when they bring such money to you will you still be a pastor there are pastors that will look for a way to kill such a soul. Because, now, listen, there was no document. Nothing documented between both of us. Nothing. But out of what? Trust that this is a man of God. People, this year, people have brought millions to me. Cash. Pastor, please pray for this money for me. I want to go for business. Peace. Prosper. Expand enlarge there are pastors that are criminals okay uh, you bring out money from your pocket keep the money here go and buy so so this thing 
so that before he goes to come you've stolen part of the money there are pastors that are thieves many things are happening behind the altars you confide in pastors when they are supposed to be custodian of classified information they are the ones selling you out they are the ones selling you out they use your situation to mock you the days are evil pastors are leaving pulpits looking for appointments how can i go and be answerable to who is to be answerable to me lost of identity no that's the truth lost of identity lost of identity because there are those that are pastors that are called also which i'm going into so there are pastors that must be there at this level i should be a father to governors to presidents to politicians there's no office i, I can't enter in these states no office there's no one i want to see that i won't see but i don't run after them i don't even call them to maintain my dignity not to sell out my conscience that when i stand and say you are dead you are dead i can stand very well and rebuke you because i've not soiled my hands i've not compromised redeeming the time for the days are evil verse 17 therefore do not be vague and thoughtless and what again foolish but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the lord is that's the awareness i'm creating the days are evil that's why the lord's day the coming of the lord is very close by it's by the corner check the events that are playing out let nobody deceive you the coming of the lord is close by let don't be deceived don't live a careless life don't be taken on unawares because you may not survive that 1000 years so that you will understand the time you are drinking you are drinking alcohol in the midst of this thing and rapture comes will you be raptured there's a grace message they are preaching trash leading people to hell that even the sin you will commit tomorrow god has already forgiven you that the moment once saved is forever saved is a lie from hell go and study ezekiel if a sinner repents from his ways and faces god he said his sins are wiped out and he will make heaven and if the righteous forsake his righteousness all the things he did and faces evil all the righteous things he did is hell he's heading to he said for them as has forsaken me for the love of this present world he has left the faith alexander the copper smith that received us the other time this time around he withstood us and what have i done i have handed him over to satan to torment him so that he will learn how not to blaspheme can a believer be cursed yes when a believer does what is wrong uh, can a, a believer needs deliverance yes when a believer goes astray uh, whatsoever makes a believer i want to ask us a question can a believer be sick a believer can be sick that's to say a believer can be oppressed if a, a believer can a believer be poor are they poor believers are they believers that are sick are they believers that are oppressed and they will say they will preach prosperity they will minister healing when it comes to deliverance they say believer does not need deliverance who is telling you that junk and they are condemning deliverance ministry you go you carry your head they do like this you do like this the bible says the believer that is joined to a harlot is one with that harlot that's to say that believer needs what deliverance from harlotry so where are they quoting from they should bring scripture nobody this bible they should bring it let's discuss the bible i won't argue the bible because scriptures don't compete they complement each other they don't contradict each other they don't conflict if a believer born again goes to hell is robbing at a particular time there are believers that are cultists they are still in court but they speak in tongues when they wanted to dedicate that place they said we've checked we know most of the pastors in this town and we know that they are still there i'm not paying any dues anywhere my name is not anywhere it's not in any occultic satanic book or cult book it's not found i'm no more there i used to be i'm not paying dues anywhere that takes us to the next one we are talking about great awakening this is the great awakening you need to hear i command your spiritual ears open to hear this in the name of jesus 
Let this awakening be planted in your spirit in the name of Jesus. It, this will make you to live purposefully. It will make you live carefully, accurately. That takes us to the next one, revival. What is revival? Dry bones coming back to life. That's revival. There are many dry bones in the body of Christ. Dry prayer life. Dry spiritual life. Dry study life. Many believers, including pastors, are suffering from spiritual kwashoko. Big head, long neck, protruded tummy, tiny hands and tiny legs. Because they've been malnourished. That's why when you come, I feed you with the word. I would rather teach you the word and not prophesy than to prophesy and not teach the word. Teaching you how to take charge, how to occupy territories. When you are providing everything for your children and you are not teaching them anything, are you helping them? You are destroying them. It is better you don't even provide and teach them how they should provide for themselves. Which one is better? That's why you see all these people that their parents were up there. So revival means dry bones coming back to life. People that have lost it coming back to life. What is revival? It is the realization of massive, total, and genuine conviction, repentance, and conversion of souls into the kingdom of God. Realization of massive, total, and genuine conviction. Total and genuine conviction. One. Two. Repentance. Three. Conversion. Acts chapter 2 verse 37. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said unto them, Repent ye and be converted. When they heard this, they heard the preaching of Peter. They were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Verse 38. What did Peter tell them? Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent. Verse 41. Then they that gladly received the word, received the word, received the word, were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Genuine conviction. They were convicted. Conviction means coming to the reality of something. You are persuaded beyond all doubts, beyond all arguments, and you decided. There's difference between repentance and conversion. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. There's difference. There are many people that are repented, but they are not converted. Can you see this? Everybody together, read. One to go. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. You've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But conversion, death, talks about you living your old ways, living your old life. Paul, speaking in Ephesians, calls that life the old man. Living the old life. There are believers that they are born again, they have repented, but they tell lies more than sneak. When they lie, even Satan is clapping for them. <laughs> Say, hey! This one passed me. <laughs> but they lie more than anything. A believer. There are believers. They are drinkers and drunkards. They are born again. They are in church. They speak in tongues. Some even cast out devils. But you see them. They are drinkards. They drink. And he said, Oh Samuel, oh Lemuel, there are two things that destroy a king. Because we've been made kings and priests that we might reign on the earth. What happened? Strong drink. And what again? Woman. Strong drink. Woman. There are believers, tongue speaking, jumping from one bed to another bed, one bed to another bed, one woman to another woman, one man to another man. When you begin to carry this mixed alba, into your system as a believer you sleep with these goats this one is a goat this one is a giraffe this one is a hyena this one is a crocodile what is your body like and your body is the temple of the holy ghost so there are many 
that are born again, but they are not what? They are not converted. They are still living the old life. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, are you repented only? <laughs> What's your neighbor saying? Are, are you repented only? You are repented and converted? Uh, ask your neighbor, are you sure you are repented and converted? So, it is dry bones coming back to life. It is massive, genuine salvation of souls. Do you, you know that there are many that are born again, but they are one leg here, one leg there. Are you aware of it? Uh -huh. They are not rooted. You cannot look at them and say, this one is truly born again. This one has genuinely <laughs> converted. Pastor, are you saying that now that you are born again, you don't relate <coughs> with your former group? I don't relate with that institution, but I relate with the individuals. Because when the wall is a relationship, I'm looking for avenues to win them over. So I won't shut the door against them. Those are people we are looking for to bring them over. So when they called me to come and dedicate that place, I went and said, Lord, I had anointed the place and prayed over the place. At least I've had some people being converted because I had dropped the oil of God on that ground. If they look at you in your compound where you are living, in your office, in your family, can they say that truly you have repented? That's the question you should ask yourself. Can they say no of a truth? That's how you know whether you are truly born again. No? Because opportunities will come. They will bring opportunities like this. To tempt you to see whether you will enter. When they bring it, will they capture you or they will, you will escape? May you escape. Yeah. That's a sacrifice. Oh. That, with two eyes, collect commissioner. Carry and put another name. I'm not interested. I, I'm yet to recover from it. There are many of you looking at me. In fact, if not 95% of you, you will jump at it. Am I correct? Say the truth. Tap your neighbor, say, say the truth. Yeah. What's your neighbor saying? Yeah. Uh-huh. No, 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 be honest, you are in church. Many will collect it. Praise the Lord. What is revival? It's when we begin to have explosive word impacts. When the word begins to make impact so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. When the word of God begins to grow and prevail, Acts 1344. Almost the whole city. What? Where were they going to? To church on a Sabbath day. To go and do what? To go and hear the word. The next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together. To do what? Not to seek miracles. To hear the word. To hear. The word of God is the foundation. Core is one of the wings of revival. Revival rides on two wings. The wings of prayer and the word. Because what is prayer? Prayer means bringing the word of God to the owner. That's prayer. Put me in remembrance. The things I said, put me, remind me of my word. Produce your course. Bring forth your strong reason. Why do you need this job? Why do you need this appointment? Why do you need this elective office? Prove it from my word. Show it to me. Why do you need to be healed? Why do you need to be delivered? Why must you be wealthy? Give me reasons. Produce your cause. People are no more seeking the word. They are seeking miracles. Any miracle you get by anointing, you may lose it. But the miracle you get by the word, you can never lose it. The anointing can fade. But the word is forever sure. Hunger for the word. Hunger for the word of God. Seek the word of God. John the Baptist did no miracles. That's what the Bible tells us in John. He did no miracles, but the whole city. John chapter 3, uh, sorry, Matthew chapter 3 from verse 5. Matthew 3 from verse 5. The whole city, they were going there. Then went out to him, Jerusalem, and all Judea. There are people that win souls. There are people that win cities. He was a city winner. And all the region round about Jordan. Have you seen it now? Verse 6. And we are baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Look at verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O you lineage of snakes. Uh, can you imagine that kind of preaching? O you generation. That is, what is generation? Lineage. Family tree. Of snakes. Vipers means snakes. Who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Uh, 
calling them that kind of a name, yet they were coming, they stayed. Who is telling you to repent or you die? It was a fiery message compelling the people. That's the great awakening. When it is the revival time, people don't see the word of God and get angry. They receive it and they amend their ways. They receive it and they get corrected. Put the scripture, go to verse 8. Look at scripture, look at verse 8. Bring forth therefore fruit, meat for repentance. Bring proofs that proves that you are born again. You say you are born again. What are your proofs? Bring them. And think not to say within thyself, we have Abraham to our father. Don't say, you generation of vipers, bring your fruit. Now that you are born again, where are your fruits? Who have you helped? When they see your life, can they glorify God that you are truly born again? How many people, he said, come on, get away from me. You workers of iniquity. I was hungry, you didn't give me food. I was naked, you refused to clothe me. I was in prison, you didn't visit me. Listen, oh, any church, check praying churches, praying churches, praying churches are poor. It's a statistics I've checked by church statistics. But check statistics where the churches that won, they are intense soul winners, they go for souls. Two, you see this welfare, helping the less privileged, helping the poor, clothing them. There are many of you looking at me. Your clothes that you've not worn five, six, seven, ten years ago, they are still there in the box. When you open them, you rearrange them, you zip them. Those clothes that you are supposed to look for, people that need them, go and give them. Go and give them. When last did the poor look at you and say, blessed be the womb that gave birth to you. Huh? Have you helped people? With the wealth, with the resources God is giving to you. Have you helped people? Who have you helped? Last quarter, they gave out materials. That's how he does. Heaps of clothes, he goes out to give them. Welfare material, food, clothing, paying people school fees. There are people richer than him. They are one cup of rice you won't see. And they claim they are believers. Demonic believers. They are not believers. My last son just saw him and saw what he wore he said ah this is good on you i like this that was the end last sunday we were here in the office he drove out to the park they took measurement of that boy and came back with the cloth and gave him when people compliment you what do you do god bless you <laughs> christmas period when you see people during christmas when they tell you happy christmas what did you say same to you some of you you even say shame to you why selfishness christmas will pass they've not tested one cup from you of rice you hear boom, 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 on the door you hide the food under carpet the next time you hide it i call for anointed rats to enter there <laughs> <laughs> you eat alone, you die alone. Uh, you think it's until you have one bag of rice? It's not until you have one bag of rice. The one cup, who are you eating it with? Who have you used your position to help? I hate stingy believers. I don't associate myself with any stingy person. Never. This one, just 500,000 in your pockets. Your pastor is a trash to you. Who they talk that thing? Pastor. You report me to pastor. Go and report. And so what? Is he the one? He cannot control me. Who is pastor to control me? I have my life to live. 500,000. So if you now have 500 million, what will you do? What will you do with 500 million? Will you still be humble? Will you still carry offering baskets? When you see us, will you still respect us? The orgas that all the orgas that I served in living faith, when I said, ah, Daddy, I still call them Daddy. They will say, ah, No, 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 no. Pastor, you are now the founder. I say, Daddy, founder my foot. I say, Me? Which founder? There are many confounded founders. Confounded. I say, Me? Found what? When God lifts you, do you still respect people? You have no relevance. 
until you show me the people your life has been a blessing to. Don't make noise where I am. Don't tell me you, are, you have money. Don't tell me you are blessed. Your blessing doesn't show in your life. It shows in the people you have helped. He said, I will make you a blessing. I will bless you. And at the same time, I will make you what? A blessing. A blessing. Don't brag about your blessing. Go and brag about people you have helped. How many families are together today because of you? 